So Data and AI Summit run by Databricks just completed. So there is a lot of really interesting announcements, exciting things coming along. Some of them have been a little bit more in the works for a while and a little more publicly discussed. And some of them are brand new and I haven't even got hands on with them yet. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about my key takeaways as a data engineer from mostly from the keynotes and like the really major announcements. There's plenty of other things that you'll find interesting that I'm not going to cover just to be clear. Uh, I do have a blog post that goes along with it. Check the description for that. And I'll give you links to pretty much the exact spots in the keynotes that I think have what you need. Quick disclaimer, I do work for Databricks. The, any opinions about what I'm excited about, why I think this is cool for data engineers are my own opinions on the matter. And I'm basing this off of what was shared at Summit at the conference, not out of any other knowledge I have. Okay, let's keep going. So um, I was very excited to watch virtually this year. I went downtown and hung out with Ike Ellis, a longtime uh, colleague and friend who also cares a lot about what's going on in the data platform space. So it was fun to kind of give a little bit of like, oohs and ahs and shouts with, with some colleagues about what was being announced. So let's start with one that um, I think was probably a, a really popular one for quite a few people. Maybe not all data engineers are ex excited about this as more like BI analysts, but uh, they announced Lakehouse Federation. It's this ability using Databricks Unity Catalog, which a lot of capabilities in Databricks um, are built around this, this thing that Unity Catalog gives you with governance, metadata management, that kind of thing. Um, Federation is if I have SQL Server, if I have Snowflake, if I have other data warehouses that aren't um, data that's been pulled and, and processed into my lake house, I can actually connect those things together from the Databricks uh, lake house UI and, and query things across different systems without having to move the data. And so uh, a lot of cool things there. I definitely recommend you check out um, the demo and the discussion there, and uh, I might get a chance to share more about that in the future. Um, why is it exciting though? It's exciting because we don't want to move data just for the heck of it, right? Data engineers don't want to always be moving data around. And so this gives us the ability to say, um, go ahead and do some exploration, do some of your querying across systems through this, through this platform, have one place you can run these queries uh, and get the benefits of federation that way. So um, check out the demos and uh, keep an eye out for more uh, on that topic. Now, Lakehouse IQ at first, uh, that sounded like something that would be um, not so much for data engineers, but this is the worlds are colliding now. And we really do, as data engineers, start going to be pulled more and more into uh, either working with AI um, to help like build out new capabilities that are very much based on AI or just using it to do our job better. I think it's something that I'm, I'm finally a believer that we need to start learning how to use things like Copilot, ChatGPT, uh, other capabilities that LLMs give us to be more efficient in order to keep up as, as things evolve here. And so Lakehouse IQ is this knowledge engine that's going to enable um, some different assistance with the Lakehouse platform. It's going to give you the ability to also, though, via API, uh, access the same type of knowledge engine. And, and so why is that so cool? Uh, basically, I can come in and ask questions of my data by typing it into uh, an agent, a chat agent, for instance, and it can actually take into account that it knows the different table names. It knows some of the jargon and some of the organizational structure and some of the, the table structures that we have within our organization by looking at the metadata that and the lineage and any other descriptions that are tracked within Unity Catalog. It also integrates with Langchain, which is something that uh, I probably should talk about more, uh, but you can go research it yourself in case I don't get around to it. Langchain is this thing that lets you put together all these pieces of uh, an app application driven by LLMs, um, but you need more than just like the knowledge that ChatGPT has. You need to be able to say take your organizational knowledge and, and go run queries against your own information, retrieve that back and include it in um, coming up with valuable answers and coming up with those solutions by using AI. So that's kind of where this fits in. Let's get more into uh, the really like platform level stuff. So Delta 3.0, some of these features I think are coming along after the first 3.0 release, if I understood correctly. Let's talk about liquid clustering. So liquid clustering is basically to replace partitions. Uh, for a long time, we've had to decide how, what kind of subfolders can I create within my top level like table folder in my lake house so that I can 
um, maybe look up uh, values for a single customer quicker by storing all of that customer's data together. The problem is you usually have some customers that are huge and you end up with a lot of data in one folder, some customers that are tiny and you have very small files and a bunch of little folders. Um, Liquid clustering is saying we're going to organize the data within files uh, intelligently. Uh, we're going to understand the data um, that is coming in and organize it in a way that you can get the best performance without having to stress about getting your partitions perfectly. Also, it's less rigid in the sense that you're going to be able to change this out and decide after this table has already been built that you need different values, different fields within your data set to be what makes up your clustering. And so I think that's really going to help us a ton. Um, lots of talk uh, in the keynote about faster writes, avoiding having to self tune this thing. It's going to do it itself. Uh, we don't have to manually tune it. It's going to do it itself. Um, and ultimately being able to process new clustering as the data comes in, not so much in a once a day we run an optimize command and it takes care of it there or everything's held up as we rewrite every single partition because of the changes we've had. Um, another one, I'll, I'll go pretty quick because some people may not care about this at all, but Delta Uniform, we've had Parquet being this format for analytics for quite a while that's been pretty pretty solid. It had some limitations, so Delta Lake came out, uh, Iceberg and Hootie also came out as different ways of working with your data that ultimately use Parquet with some layers of metadata to make it um, make it better, basically. It enables some things that just weren't possible or weren't efficient with Parquet. So now the problem is we've got like Snowflake likes to read off of Iceberg. I think BigQuery might have a preference for, for one of those. We've got these different systems that prefer a certain format, which makes it less portable than Parquet had been for such a, a, you know, a long time before these came along. So what they announced is that the Delta is going to have uniform capabilities that you can enable additional formats besides Delta Lake format. You can enable Iceberg, you'll be able to enable Hootie, and these will give you the ability to save metadata with the data. You're still saving the data once as Parquet. You can also save that metadata to let you use multiple tools to read out the data, uh, treat it as Iceberg, treat it as Hootie as you're reading that data out. Um, all that metadata is written and it's really not going to be too much overhead to keep track of that metadata is what they explained in the keynote. Now, if that's not exciting, um, you probably will be excited by a Databricks SQL performance improvements. Maybe you won't, but a lot of people will be. And so uh, Reynold did a great job talking about this. So just in short, um, predictive IO is something that's been added to, um, to give us this capability to speed up how we do deletes and updates through something called deletion vector. So not having to rewrite every file when you do a delete or rewrite the whole file when you do a delete or an update. Uh, in addition, there's some other capabilities, predictive optimization that will um, basically automatically handle things like optimize and analyze and vacuum that have been done manually often in the past. Uh, and intelligent workload management, some AI capabilities being brought to the SQL warehouse to be able to know whether or not we need to scale out by adding more clusters to the warehouse we're, we're querying against, or if we should um, continue to work on the environment we have. And so um, dig deeper in that, that's probably not a great explanation, but why is it exciting? Why should you go a little deeper is if you're trying to figure out how do I use Power BI or Tableau to um, query my data, can Databricks SQL handle it? Um, these are just more and more capabilities that are going to get you there. And so if you can get there, then what you've got is this uh, platform that you like to do your ETL and your machine learning with, you can also use it to query that data and you don't have to copy it out to yet another system. Let's talk the AI side. I'll go quick because this isn't my specialty, but uh, vector search is something that plays a lot into building applications that are driven by LLMs. Uh, it's the ability to um, embed documents and be able to quickly do a similarity search to find previous examples of like questions and answers, for instance. That, that were accurate so that you can then use that to base a new decision and a new response on. A feature serving capability is something that's going to let you very quickly access features that have been um, calculated and stored and you can in real time look up those values and do your scoring as you're um, trying to quickly make decisions off of data. You know, another really cool piece is they announced MLflow evaluation. So if you're doing A-B testing, split testing, basically I have one model in production plus another one, maybe one's chat GPT, one's MPT7. Um, I'm going to want to compare those results. And maybe it's not even in production, right? But it can be in production. I want to compare those results. Which one is giving me the best um, 
answers so that I can kind of go with that or keep keep fine tuning that. And so that's where MLflow evaluation comes in and that was really uh, well uh, set up in this demo. So take a look at the article and link straight to the demo or just go, you know, go search the internet for it. Um, Spark improvements for Python was something that I was I was pretty excited about. I'm guessing some other people are, are super excited about a piece of this. So first off, they discussed wanting to make it to where we can extend Apache Spark using Python, not always having to go back to Scala if we need a new um, source or, or destination format. And so that was really cool. Like hearing that. The other piece that was a really cool demo is the English SDK for Apache Spark. So in plain English, I can uh, have a data frame that I create. In plain English, I can tell it how I want to transform that. I can do plotting. I can do several other types of operations that we find ourselves writing the code for. Um, I do not know whether or not we're going to be using this to build production pipelines, but I certainly think this will be a handy for exploration. And who knows, the uh, things are going to continue to evolve and change quickly. So it's really exciting to see how far um, this has come already. And you can go to PySpark.ai uh, and, and find more information about that. Um, but definitely check out the demo if you're at all interested. I thought uh, Allison did a great job with that. So that's my initial thoughts from the Data AI Summit of what really stood out and why it's interesting. Uh, I hope that that was helpful to you. I probably missed something that you would find very interesting. So um, do not limit yourself to my opinion here. Um, but hopefully the links and things will help you uh, dig in a little deeper to the one that sounded the most appealing to you. Um, please subscribe to this channel if you want to hear more of my thoughts on Apache Spark, on uh, Databricks, and on uh, other data platform capabilities that we use as data engineers. See you next time.